to mark the week-long celebrations as the West Cork Town hosts the Atlantic Challenge Longboat Championships. We'll be talking to some of the 300 competitors from 16 nations. We'll stop off to meet people who call Whiddy Island home. And also, we will sample the delights of walking on Sheep's Head. This evening we're in Bantry and there's a great buzz about the place because the town is hosting the Atlantic Challenge Bantry Bay Gig World Championships. And for those of us, myself included, who wouldn't be very au fait with nautical terms, a gig is a traditional longboat. There are 300 competitors from 16 countries taking part in the Atlantic Challenge here in Bantry and as you can imagine that makes a lot of work for a lot of people so that everything runs smoothly. Dermot Murphy is the chairperson of the organising committee. I presume Dermot it wasn't today nor yesterday that she started working no, on this. this has been going on for quite a while now. We're three years at it, probably two years intensively and um, you know as a result we've uh, 16 nations here, lots of sailors and a good week, a good week ahead of us. Now the, the young people are aged between what and what? Well, it kind of varies. I suppose the international age limit is 15. In Ireland we say 16 because they're quite big boats, they're big oars, they're hard to handle. So I think people are, need to be a little bit older to manage them. Um, and there's no upper age limit. But at any one time half the crew have to be under 21. And four out of the, the full crew would have to be male or female. There's a mix, gender mix and an age mix throughout the crew. There's also a, a nice mix uh, in their accommodation because they all get to meet each other don't yeah, they? Yeah everybody I mean um, everybody bunks in um, it would be very difficult to run a contest of this size if uh, you had to accommodate people in B&B's and hotels around the place we put everybody into the same style accommodation a bare room they they're bring in their school. own in they're school in the community yeah, yeah, each get a room everybody's on the same pitch basically as such and uh, they really get to know each other quite well outside of the competition because they're all in it together you know it's, it's they're roughing it really a little bit and that's part of the challenge of Atlantic Challenge. The actual competitions, is there a mix? Like I've seen some people rowing furiously and others putting up sails. Yeah, well, the boats have ten oars and three sails. Um, and we'd have events where there's just rowing only and skill events rowing without rudder to a slalom course against the clock, we'll say. And um, there's a number of different types of sailing events as well, straight sailing races of or a triangular course. Or, um, and then there's a combination of oars and sails where you'd row one leg, sail two legs and you change over between oars and sails and it's a very, very exciting event and it kind of shows the full potential of these boats. So. There's a remarkable, I suppose, emblem for the Atlantic Challenge just there in the town and it's, uh, it's lit up at night, it's really beautiful. Oh yeah, that's, um, that's our light, light craft. Light craft. Yeah, that's made up of almost just over 6,000 milk cartons that have been collected by all the local school children in all the primary schools in the area. It's actually a replica, it's a 100 foot replica of uh, one of our longboats, which are 38 feet, 2 inches. And she had a wonderful start, didn't you, with the opening Fantastic, ceremony and the yeah, festivities at the weekend? We had, we had Michael D. Higgins down, our president. Um, really big crowd in town, it was fantastic, and great atmosphere. And um, I just hope the rest of the week will be as good as the weather today, you know, it's fantastic. Like we said, there are 16 nations taking part here in Bantry and the United States, of course, are represented. Their team captain is Neil Drake. Neil, how are you enjoying it so far? I'm having a great time. Uh, you know, we've been here for a couple of days now and uh, just enjoying the great weather <laughs> and uh, we're having a blast so far. How many of you came from the States? There's 19 competitors and we have two other trainers as well. And do you take turns? Yes, we rotate through. Uh, there's about 13 people on the boat at one time. Um, and we have different coxes that rotate through and uh, in the nine different events. And how long have you been training together? We trained for two and a half weeks uh, before we came to Ireland and then uh, came here and we have our race boat that we'll 
that we'll be competing in. And apart, of course, from the, the competitions that take part on the water, there's a lot of um, socialising and intercultural exchanges. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot going on in town that they have uh, put on for us. And, um, you know, we get to experience everything that's going on in Bantry. And uh, just hanging out and exchanging stories and techniques that everyone has, knowledge of the boat, it's, it's great. But uh, definitely, we're very serious about our competing, um, as well as, you know, making friends. But, um, you know, once you get in the boat, it's, you know, it's all gung-ho gung -ho from there. We've taken ourselves out from Bantry Bay now, just a short hop across the water to Whitty Island, one of the smallest off the West Cork coast. And for so long, Whitty has been associated with the awful oil tragedy back in 1979 that claimed so many lives. However, Geraldine Harney came to visit here recently on a day not quite as nice as today, but she found that there's a lot more to this very special place that is still home to a small number of people. We may not have chosen the sunniest day to visit Whitty Island, but even when it's cold and wet, there is something alluring about the ferry journey from Bantry Pier. Especially when your ferryman is a native of this small but special island. Whitty, there's several different variations on what Whitty actually means. Some people say it's vaudly, it's a Viking word from, for godly island. Well, there's been people living here for hundreds and hundreds of years, and the late 15, early 1600s, there was nearly 800 people here. But it was, uh, they were walking in uh, pilchard palaces, fish palaces. There were pilchards were here at that time. And they were barreling them here and there. And there was two or three sites in the end here. It was very popular all over West Cork, but they barreled them here and they sent them out to Spain and Holland and everywhere. So there was, was up to 800 people. And that was there until near the famine times. But what is the modern day Whitty like to live on? It's a kind of a contradiction. Living here has become easier. But actually the population has fallen. It's, I suppose it's modern life, people like to get places more easily and stuff, more accessible, but we have ferry service here now and we have, a, we have facilities in the island, we have a place to go for a bite to eat or a drink or something, but the um, population has declined an awful lot. It's declined maybe 60% in the last 30 years or more. Tim's mother, Noreen, has been living on the island for 51 years. I don't know why I came here, I was just married here and um, it was different times then, uh, small boats coming in and out and everything and, and some people said I was mad but I, I, still, I still came and I'm still here but it's a way easier to live here now, we have the ferries so it's much easier now to live here than then. Well we had a farm, a fairly good, big, a big fairly big farm and uh, with cattle and we kept pigs as well and that was basically it and then when we sold to the oil company uh, he got a job from the oil company and the arrival of the Gulf Oil Company was a matter of celebration in fact the Clancy brothers recorded a song in its honor bringing home the oil a song still sung on the island today Sailing all around the world and bringing home the island. Working on a giant ship is very hard, we talk. But in January 1979, disaster struck when the super tanker, the Betel Juice, exploded. But my home is just alongside the oil terminal, actually. It shook our whole house, our whole house. It cracked the walls in our house when, it, when the big explosion came that night. It was horrific, yeah, it was absolutely horrific. Um, there was no survivors, there was 51 people killed, I think it was 51, 50 or 51 killed. And um, we all ran from the mainland in the middle of the night. And at that time there was only very small boats in there, and we're lucky it was a calm night. And, uh, but it, it was horrific, you could, see, you could see everybody, it was like the middle of the day going out. It, there was, the flames were hundreds of feet in the air behind the island, the whole bay was lit up. I don't remember, I don't want to, to relate about it actually again, no, no. It was a dreadful night. It, it cast a big shadow on the end. It did. It was. It, it took years for the for the gloom to lift. You know, it was, it was, you know the tanker and the salvage and everything. And it was. It was an awful bad time. It was a horrific. Thing.
Early in the last century, Whitty, for a short period, became famous as a US naval air base during World War I. The base was set up here after the Lusitania was sunk and the Americans wanted to keep an eye out for German U-boats. But back to the Whitty of today. For the more active, Whitty is a wonderful place for walking. We come in here maybe <coughs> twice a week. Sometimes if there are groups in here that need a guide. And it's ideal for walking because the trails are easy. They're like not difficult. It's not very strenuous walking. It's, the scenery is beautiful. It's, you know, there's lots to see and do lots of historical sites. And, you know, we meet the locals and all of that. And we have quite, um, after the walk, then we have some nice food and a drink here in the bar with Tim. And it's, we talk about the walk and talk about what we're going to do next. Maybe next time, the men may come to the island to go on a bicycle ride. Bicycles are available to rent and there is a dedicated bike trail and map. There may only be 24 people living on the island, but money still has to be made. The main occupation would be farming, fishing, uh, one or two work in the oil company. There are a few people in the island who have a mussel company, they are with my aquaculture, they mussel farm. Uh, it's, a, it's a mixed bag really. And when it comes to eating, you can experience the local produce. That is a premium product. Like, you, know, you, can, you can buy crab and you can buy this, but it's nothing like bringing it out of the sea. Nothing like, and we bring it in here and we shell it ourselves and we boil it and we serve it up. Willy may not be the biggest, most glamorous island, but it is a place apart and is certainly well worth a visit. Sublime Prelude and Fugue in B-flat major.